Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on new media, activism and representation. This lecture is part of your paper on news and society. About the module, as private news media is being dissected the world over for its declining standards, particularly the blurring of boundaries between news, entertainment and cultures of consumption. The possibilities of free expression offered by the internet are being celebrated. This module sketches the broad contours of emergent scholarship on the potential of this media for both mobilization and representation of protest and by extension democratic politics at national and global scales. Media ecologies across the world have been profoundly reconfigured with the coming of the internet and particularly the world wide web. Unlike the mass media wherein the dissemination of information is one sided and controlled by a small number of gatekeepers, this new media allows ordinary people to both consume as well as produce information as also to connect to each other. It is host to alternate journalism practices by independent outlets which seek to counter dominant discourses of corporate led media. Importantly, it is also a space for mobilizing myriad forms of activism. Since the early days of the internet, movement activists across the globe have found tools such as emails, e-groups and social networking sites very useful to advocate on specific causes to plan and coordinate offline protest and to also report on these protests. One of the earliest and perhaps most cited example is that of the Zapatistas movement by the Chipas in Mexico who use the medium to publicize the state-led injustices on them and by doing so garnered much international support. As such, uh, neoliberal globalization has provided the structural context for many contemporary movements. This is not only because a whole range of them strongly contest the neoliberal economic model, but also because they increasingly do so via the internet, which is itself a product of globalization and which ironically also facilitates the global capital flows. The Zapatistas is itself seen as part of a larger anti-corporate globalization movement variously defined as movement for global justice, globalization from below, internet worked social movements and networked social movements of the digital age. The movement which emerged in the late 90s comprises a vast array of transnational activists and organizations such as those working on issues of labor, environment, gender and anti-war issues. Together they have organized a series of protests in North America and Europe against neoliberal institutions such as the World Economic Forum. World Trade Organization, G7 and the International Monetary Fund. One of the early and perhaps among the most successful protest was against the WTO in Seattle in 1999, commonly referred to as the Battle of Seattle. Another major protest was the anti-war march against the US intervention in Iraq on February 15, 2003 which saw participation of almost 20 million people in a number of the cities across the world. 
The anti-corporate globalization movement got a fillip with the emergence of the Occupy protest in 2012, which stood against the stark class inequalities that are inherent to the capitalist order. Its chief slogan, We the 99%, spoke of the domination of the majority by one person global elite who have near total control over world's resources and wealth. The protest began in New York but spread to many cities in Europe, America and Asia and this was achieved largely through the use of social networking sites. In fact, the protests were triggered when a group called Adbusters in New York made a Twitter hashtag, hashtag Occupy Wall Street to mobilize support, which saw participation by thousands of people making Twitter the technological platform most closely associated with OWS. Social media platforms have also been used as tools of mobilization in the recent pro-democracy or anti-authoritarian protest across regimes of Asia and North Africa in the last few years. In most of these countries, state control weighed heavy on both national news systems and broadcast of international stations. Social media use was first documented in Iran in 2009 when a popular uprising known as the Green Movement erupted after the incumbent president. Mohammad Ahmadinejad was reinstated amidst allegations of election fraud. Here, young people use sites such as Facebook and Twitter to coordinate street protests which lasted for weeks. In a similar fashion, protests were seen in a few countries of the Middle East in 2011, collectively termed as the Arab Spring. It all started in Tunisia when a video of a man immolating himself went viral on YouTube and became a catalyst for release of mass anger against the corrupt and oppressive regime. Young and old came together and captured the street for days together following which the president stepped down. Soon this revolutionary mood shifted to Egypt. Were also popular uprisings mobilized through online and offline flora led to the president submitting his resignation. Many scholars have over the years documented the growth in social media used in these countries which helped build a culture of resistance despite state attempts at censorship and threats to online activists. For instance, prior to the 2009 protest in Iran, the country saw massive growth in blogs which became a medium of self-expression, debate and exchange for young people, including women. Similarly, Egypt also had an active blog sphere. In 2008, Egyptian scholar Mona Elathoy discussed how social media use by young people had the potential to bring about a radical political change in the country. She wrote, the Middle East today in 2008 is full of young people. The majority of the region's population is below the age of 30. Paradoxically, their nation's rulers are all old having for years fought off any potential alternative leaders, creating a political vacuum into which those young people of the region are increasingly stepping. 
the internet blogs and social networking sites now give voices to those most marginalized in the middle east today young people and women generation facebook might not be able to change their regime today but in building communities and support groups online they are creating the much needed middle ground that countries like egypt desperately require as generation facebook grows older and more assured in its ability to organize and unite it will be confronting a potentially inexperienced leader in the form of gamal mubarak with potentially tragic and unforeseen consequences Social media are not only a tool for mobilization of protests but also importantly a means to report on the same As such online journalistic platforms are now used by activists to give detailed accounts on these actions to the larger public For example The protest against the WTO in Seattle gave birth to the Independent Media Center network. A new service started by activists in order to counter the misinformation or lack of information by mainstream media on movements. Altogether, what is now increasingly visible is an intersection between offline and online activism. This dynamic relationship has been captured by Fahmi as follows New social movements with their do it yourself approach to information and communication technologies have nevertheless mixed old and new technologies merging virtual and physical spaces onto networks of alternative communication of resistance constitute within these hybrid physical and virtual worlds have created new geographies of protest on the one hand global network geographic mobility loose organizational models and access to communications have shifted their campaigns and resources to alternative virtual venues on the other hand as events are reported through websites blogs and streams in a collaborative social process a means of navigation is provided for street protesters virtual and physical spaces are experienced almost as a single space of communication speech and controls the range of political potentials that internet and particularly social media affords has prompted many scholars to evaluate this new media through the normative habermasian lens of public sphere many of them see it in proximity to the idol even if only partially and thus significant for strengthening democratic discourse and practice a number of scholars are however skeptical of these democratizing potentials of this media and express their reservations on grounds such that this media is not so much autonomous of state and market control that its use and participation is not always as alternate or counter hegemonic as is perceived and how its potential for organizing offline protest is often over credited to the neglect of other factors one of the key issues is the ownership of dominant social media platform such as facebook google youtube and twitter by massive corporations who are not guardians but profiteers of free speech moreover 
On these platforms, there are economic, political and ideological forms of media power at play. Private ownership, concentration, advertising, the logic of consumption and entertainment, the high visibility of and attention given to elites and celebrities, shape and filter communication on dominant social media platform. Another critical issue is the increasing state control on this space through surveillance and censorship. States uh, now have high access to surveillance technology and in this context the idea of anonymity and freedom on social media or internet at large needs a rethink. In fact, social media is now an easy source of repression as states use their technological powers to track activists and later arrest and torture them. This kind of surveillance and repression was seen for instance in Iran following the 2009 protest. State controls on this space are visible not only in authoritarian regimes but also in democratic ones such as the increased censorship in the United Kingdom following the 2011 riots in the country in the same period a similar increase in uh, internet censorship was seen in 12 other 12 democratically elected regimes. Concerns about censorship were raised also by participants in the Occupy protest in New York. Many of them pointed to restrictions that uh, Twitter placed on its service during the moment which was possibly a politically motivated decision. They also expressed worries about being vulnerable to state surveillance on this public platform. However, uh, notwithstanding these concerns, participants expressed an unwillingness to leave the social platform as they perceived the potential solutions to lie not in the avoidance of social media technologies but rather in their more careful and clever use. What this indicates is that despite existing and potential controls, activists are not always deterred of social media for organizing protests. This can be understood in light of the hostility that mainstream news media exhibits to protest movement against the established order. It can perhaps also be explained by an argument that in a heavily censored context using the internet is a political act in and of itself a routine rebellion that while not necessarily overtly challenging the regime thumbs its nose at attempts to limit information access. The question however is whether and how political participation via social media bears on democracy. A number of scholars raise this question and uh, emphasize that in order to evaluate this potential what must be taken into account is not only who or how many participate but also the nature of this participation. In this vein many note the inadequacies in the narrative of the universal and egalitarian nature of online public sphere by pointing to the persistent global inequalities in excess or what is termed as digital divide existing along gender, class, language, geography or other categories. Others note that access to information on the internet does not always translate into 
better democratic outcomes. It does not, for instance, lead to increased political activity or make citizens better informed and as such increased political activity is not always more democratic or has an impact on political process. Likewise, talking politics via new media is not necessarily synonymous with accessing and discussing subversive content. In addition to such critics, scum scholars also resist the disproportionate credit given to social media for mobilization of offline protest. Many of them emphasize that in the sweep of technocentric narratives such as Facebook revolution and Twitter revolution, what is often missed is an analysis of socio-political context which in fact conditions if and how protests erupt and their impact. As Wolfsfield, Segev and Schaefer note, the nature of the political environment affects both the ability of citizens to gain access to social media and on their motivation to take to the streets. In societies where people have less access to social media or where there is a great deal of censorship and control, it is more difficult for descendants to exploit these new technologies. Even in places that uh, do have easy and ample access to the new media, many citizens may not be angry enough to endure the considerable cost associated with collective action. Herein, scholars also highlight the importance of traditional political work that goes in mobilizing protest which happens in concrete real world settings such as through face to face meetings. Technologies in themselves are insufficient substitute for political strategy, goals and discourse. As an instance, in the Iranian protest in 2009, Twitter revolution did not bring down the regime. Most Twitter feeds during the protest in fact originated outside the country. Also the protest escalated at a time of when not was the internet speed slow but also there was an increase in censorship, detention of bloggers and tapping of phones. Additionally, it has been argued that despite the claims that Twitter played a central role in the uprisings, the fact is that Twitter was the least prevalent new media platform and as such 90% of Iranian Twitter users lived in Tehran. In the study of Iranian youth in 2011, the scholars concluded our hope is that this study will encourage communication and political science scholars to look broadly for evidence on new media role in political organizing and to contextualize this role in the larger fabric of social life. It is studies that attend to the nuanced way in which interpersonal, cultural and structural factors constitute information flows that can best avoid the tendency to mythologize, to avoid the tendency to mythologize youth in undemocratic societies and the technologically deterministic narratives where social movements are synonyms with social media. An important strand for critic is also about the narrative about social media being a chief medium for the publicity of protest. 
Critical scholars of media emphasize the fact that one cannot undermine the role of the mainstream media in framing and disseminating news of protest at a global scale. For instance, in the case of Iran, the global support of the movement was garnered when international television news media such as Al Jazeera picked up the story by broadcasting the videos of demonstration and police station uploaded by protesters on different online platforms. The extent interface between uh, social media and mainstream media needs to be thoroughly assessed. In one assessment, the 2011 Arab Spring movement were planned on Facebook, organized on Twitter, broadcast on YouTube and amplified by Indie Media and Al Jazeera. Here, one also needs to scrutinize the nature of discourse on alternate journalism platforms which may not always be altogether different from the mass media in terms of the number of voices or the depth of coverage. Rejecting both optimist and skeptic perspective on the democratic potential of social media, some scholars take a more moderate view which resonates with cautious optimism. It is suggested that the idea of the public sphere is still a useful concept to qualify online spaces provided one acknowledges the multiplicity and diversity of publics and public spheres, both hegemonic and counter hegemonic. Within such a perspective, the internet is neither inherently oppressive nor automatically emancipatory. It is a terrain of contested philosophies and politics. It does not necessarily serve either hegemonic or counter hegemonic purposes. It can and does serve both. Likewise, social or other media neither result in positive or negative consequences. They do not act, they do not make society, they do not have one dimensional impact. Media are systems that are in a complex manner embedded into antagonist economic, political and cultural power structures. Summary As protest movements erupt at uh, scale across the world and media technologies proliferate the scholarship on the relationship of new media and protest also continues to grow. This module outlined the broad divergent strands of current perspective on the political possibilities of internet. Particularly social media as these get fashioned as protest sites in a context of heavily corporatized mainstream news media. While some scholars celebrate these uh, new media for catalyzing political resistance, others are more critical of these narratives bringing to the fore account of digital divide as well as state censorship and surveillance. Importantly, such critical perspectives also enclose an analysis of the emergent intersection between new and old media as spaces of protest representation. Thank you.